Remember when we'd ask AI something and all we'd get back was more text, like, thanks, but I wanted you to actually do the thing. Well, that frustration might finally be ending. I've been digging into three major players that just dropped some fascinating tech. Manus AI, Google's Gemma 3, and OpenAI's new agent toolkit. They're approaching this problem in wildly different ways, and I thought we could chat about what I found. So what's the deal with these AI agents anyway? Think of them as AI systems that don't just talk about stuff. They actually roll up their digital sleeves and get things done. Unlike traditional LLMs that operate in a simple input-output paradigm, agents implement a sophisticated multi-stage execution framework. Traditional LLMs are constrained by their token generation pipeline and context window limitations, essentially operating as stateless text processors with O of 1 complexity in terms of interactions. They generate text but can't take actions beyond the prompt interface. AI agents, however, operate on a fundamentally different architecture. They leverage function calling APIs and tool integration frameworks that allow them to break free from pure text modality. The key differentiators are their persistent memory systems and environment interaction loops, enabling O of N complexity interactions with external systems. The transformation from LLM to agent requires three critical components, API hooks for external tool integration, planning modules for task decomposition, and execution engines for action implementation. This creates a continuous feedback cycle of input, action, feedback, further action, what we call agentic workflows. Each platform we'll examine offers different capabilities within this agent architecture with distinct strengths and limitations. Let's check them out. First up is Manus AI. The name comes from Latin word for hand. Hi, I'm Pete from Manus AI. For the past year, we'll be quietly building what we believe is the next evolution in AI. And today, we're launching an early preview of Manus, the first general AI agent. Introduced as a general AI agent that turns your thoughts into actions. What grabbed me about Manus is it's basically saying, just tell me what you want done, then go live your life. It works even when you're offline, and it'll just ping you when it's finished. Manus use cases are pretty awesome. Like, upon asking Manus to screen resumes, it read through each resume, created profiles of candidates, ranked them, and even packaged everything into a neat spreadsheet. No coding, no prompting tricks, no babysitting the AI. But here's the thing, Manus seems pretty closed off. It's this fancy black box that does amazing stuff, but you can't really peek inside or tinker with it. Great if you just want results, not so great if you enjoy getting your hands dirty with the tech. I'm definitely intrigued though. Feels like having a digital employee rather than just another tool. Now Gemma 3 is doing something completely different. It's not even trying to be an agent system. Instead, Google's basically saying, here are some amazing models, go build whatever you want with them. It's like they're handing out AI engines rather than finished cars. What's cool about Gemma 3 is that it runs right on your devices, phone, laptop, whatever. No need to phone home to some massive data center. Just pick the parameter size that works for your project. This actually reminds me a lot of what DeepSeek has been doing lately. I gotta say though, this is definitely not for everyone. If you were hoping to just download an app and have an AI agent doing your taxes, Gemma 3 isn't it. You need to be comfortable with code to make anything useful with it. But for developers, this is like being handed the keys to the kingdom. Complete control, no usage fees, and models that can handle 140 plus languages while analyzing both text and images. Pretty sweet deal if you've got the skills to use it. And then there's OpenAI's approach, which feels like they're trying to split the difference between the other two. They're not giving you a ready-made agent like Manus, 
and they're not just tossing models at you like Google. Instead, they've built this toolkit that makes creating custom agents way easier than before. I was looking at their new responses API, and it's basically a simplified way to build agents that can use tools like web search, file search, and this blew my mind, actual computer control. Like, the AI can literally move the mouse and type things. Their computer control demo hit 87% success on some web tasks, which isn't perfect, but come on, that's a computer using a computer. We're in some serious meta territory here. What I love about OpenAI's approach is how they're making this accessible to more developers. There was this example where Coinbase built a crypto agent in just a few hours. A few hours? That would have taken weeks before. The downside? You're still paying for API usage and you're building on OpenAI's infrastructure. But honestly, the speed of development might be worth that trade-off for a lot of people. So how do these three stack up? If you're a regular user who just wants AI to handle stuff, Manus is your go-to. It's basically set it and forget it AI. Developer who loves tinkering, Gemma 3 is your sandbox. Somewhere in between, OpenAI's toolkit gives you those building blocks without starting from zero. Performance-wise, they're all impressive in different ways. Manus is claiming benchmark beating results, but keeping the details close to the vest. Gemma 3 is somehow outperforming models 10 times its size. And OpenAI's computer-using agent is out here navigating the web better than some of my relatives. I'm particularly excited about that last one. An AI that can use software the way humans do opens up so many possibilities. So that's where we are with the AI agent revolution. Three very different approaches, all pushing boundaries in their own way. Will we end up with autonomous AI assistants handling our busy work while we focus on creative stuff? I honestly think we're heading there faster than most people realize. What do you think? Which of these approaches makes the most sense to you? Drop a comment below. I'm genuinely curious which one resonates with you all. If you found this interesting, smash that like button and subscribe for more tech conversations. Catch you in the next one.